Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we're going to be looking at the active, ac activated economic analysis in Aspen Plus. Sorry, that was hard to say. I have opened a simulation. This is actually one that is from a, a refrigeration lesson that Aspen uh, has as part of their help modules. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to just take this, and it's already been run. Um, you can come in and you know look at the various processes if you wish, but we're just worried today about having a system that has been run and has results with no errors. What we want to do today is run economics. Now, some of this is going to be a little bit challenging to show you because I have this set up. If you see these here, this is an indication that I've already set up my version of Aspen to run the economic analysis. When you hit run on a simulation, at the end, there's a little thing that pops up that asks if you want to run the activated economics. And you can say yes, and it will bring you to something where you'll have this economic analysis. So we want to click that we want to activate our economics. So if you go to the economics tab after saying yes, um, there are several different things you can do. One is that you can actually look and see what the process utilities are. And... Um, you can add utilities that you know, so what's your price for low pressure steam, etc. And you can do any of those kinds of things you want um, to make it match whatever your industry standards or if it's for a class, whatever you're using as the data for in class. There are cost options you can look at. So for instance, you can change whatever type of Oh, they call them templates, but what sort of values are you using? What's your life of your plant? What's the length of startup, etc.? You can change all those things. If you're working in different currencies, you can certainly do that. And then we need to go through these steps here. Now, reality is you only need to do the mapping for the most part. And if you say map, <coughs> Tell it that you want to map all unit operations and that you want to do the default. Okay. I also want to size the equipment and evaluate the cost. If you do not have enough information in your simulation for the sizing, for it to do it automatically, then you'll need to hit custom sizing and you'll go in and edit those things. Now this would be, say, a case where maybe you've put in um, kind of magic separation where it's just going to do a component split but you knew that that was actually going to represent say uh, a molecular sieve okay that wasn't modeled in Aspen but you have pricing information for that so that would be the sort of place where you might want to do some custom sizing some things like that uh, reactors are another place where we often end up using this so I'm going to size the equipment. I'll use default. I'm going to evaluate the cost, and I'm going to say OK. And then it has me gives me an opportunity to tell it what type of, say, heat exchangers in this case that I want. OK? And I can do this for my compressors, for every piece of equipment. Now, in this case, <coughs> I chose a simple process that only has four pieces of equipment. They're pretty standard. I'll accept their defaults. I'll say OK. And it runs. If you want to look at the sizing, you can uh, come over and find those kinds of information that's set up. I can look at my various equipment. I can view the equipment. I can also look at what happens in terms of utilities, the equipment, it gives me things like the price of just the equipment purchase and the installed price 
tells me things like how much it weighs, which might be a factor in whether or not I'm going to put it on ground level or maybe up on a higher level or a catwalk, something like that. So these are just various things that you need to know. Notice that the installed weight, so this includes now that it has fluids in it. If you have certain equipment that you need to add qu quotes for, you can go through and do that. Okay, But you have all of this information. It also does allow you to send it to Excel. Okay, You can also do the evaluate the process. Okay, which simply goes through and looks at and will pop up with recommendations if you have places where you could do a better job, uh, maybe especially like with heat exchange, something like that. And the investment analysis, you'll see a lot of Excel screens suddenly flashing around. But what it's doing is it's looking at the long term, the life cycle analysis, or not life cycle analysis, the cost analysis of this plant over time. And it's doing lots of flashing. Okay, so it's showing me the projected capital cost for a 15 year life. This is the operating cost. Uh, it has all sorts of different things here. Uh, cash flow information, project summary, equipment summary, etc. And this would allow you to write a full report with economic analysis based on whatever the input is. Now again, the input may or may not be really what you want. You need to make sure that you're going in and putting in like utility costs, uh, raw materials prices, that are actually reflective of your process pricing scheme. So this is just a very quick introduction to the activated economics within Aspen Plus. I uh, wish you luck <laughs> on getting all of these things to work. It's easy and yet challenging. I will tell you that we have not really discussed how to do the heat exchanger design within this. Um, it is going to be done in a, another course when you take your design courses. Uh, so we're not covering it at this time. Well, thank you very much for your time.